All right, so inside of our Meals app in the views, I have the foundations of a view that we'll end up using. And I also have the template already created in this location. Nothing about this is new, so you should be able to really just copy and paste this pretty quickly with some of the other code you already have. So the idea here is, of course, to set up that HTMX is going to be handling our context for us and like actually loading the Git request for this toggle, but also handling the post request when that ends up happening. So the idea here then is inside of my recipes list, I actually want to just change this a little bit so I can have that toggle button itself. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to being instead of a list element, we'll just put it into being a div. That way we can, you know, really have this come out in a little bit better of a format. So if we look in here now, it just looks like this. And so our add recipe, you know, maybe we put this to being like something like H3 or there's a lot of options that we have here with how we might want to go about changing that. But the main thing here is we want to now have a div of HX dash get and we want to get the view here, right? So we need to actually set that up. So I'm going to go ahead and put the foundation again of the URLs and then we want to grab the recipe ID and set it equal to the iteration value, which is inside of this object list to recipe ID. And we just need to configure that URL in our main configuration URLs, right? So down in Trijango URLs, this is where we're going to go ahead and bring in our meal queue toggle view. So inside of here, we'll do from meals.views import meal queue toggle view. I really, really think you should already know how to do that really easily at this point. So with that, we'll go ahead and give it a name of meal toggle and give it that roughly that same URL, but of course adding in a, you know, a wild card in here for the actual recipe ID. Of course, looking only for integers in this case. So now that we've got that in our meal, the actual list.html, we can actually do the meal dash toggle here. And with that, we should be able to see the ID, assuming that everything was done correctly. And it wasn't, we have to add in the trigger for this, which in this case is just gonna be revealed. Okay, so we refresh that. And now we've got this ID coming in here. Now, of course, the purpose of getting to that point is to now flush out what this ID will do for us. So of course, this is actually going back to the model itself and of course, toggling in queue is going to be one of the things we'll want to do, uh, but also checking whether or not it is in the queue itself. So going back into our view, first and foremost, we have to get the model object. Let's just check that this recipe exists at all. Um, it's certainly something we could check in here. We don't have to check in here, though. What we need to check is initially we need to check if it is in the queue at all. Right. So we just need to check this value here. So for the purposes of the get request, I'm just going to check that it's in the queue for the post request. Then I'll actually check if that recipe even exists. Right. Um, so let's go ahead and do this from dot models. We're going to import the meal itself and I'm going to go ahead and give my user ID. Well, first off, let's grab the user is equal to the request that user and the user ID is well, none, if user dot is authenticated, then the user ID is equal to user ID. Okay. And so is pending, like it's in the queue would be meal dot objects dot by user ID. Of course, that's our user ID here. Of course, if it is none, if the user ID is none, then we're going to want to return something. I'll, I'll worry about that in a little bit. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and check if it's in, first off, a any meal item whatsoever by that user. And then again, in Q, like we've seen before. And this, of course, is now the argument for the recipe ID, okay? So we want to limit the number of requests to our database. This at least limits it to some degree. Granted, they could give us the incorrect recipe ID, like we could look it up incorrectly, and then that would tell us whether or not it's in the queue itself. So with this, I can actually add a toggle label here too, and say add to meals, for example. And then we'll say if it's not pending, then we'll go ahead and say 
the other message being remove from meals. Okay, so if it's not pending, then add it. Otherwise, remove it, right? And so that's gonna be our next label. And we probably only need that label overall. Maybe, maybe we could have the label and pending for our template itself. It's really uh, kind of arbitrary on both of those things because we could do the label in the actual template itself, but we'll go ahead and put pending in here as well. And let's be consistent on our quotes here. Okay, so now that we've got this, I'm gonna go ahead and jump back into that template itself and just do the toggle label, right? This time I'm just gonna put it into a button. Okay, so we've got our button here and our toggle label. So now if I go back to my recipes, now it's showing me the toggle label. Now granted, I played around with it in my admin a little bit and added some new meals and did all sorts of stuff just to make sure that we're at this point, but that's pretty cool. So now I have these two different things. Now, the nice thing too is that I did add that this is pending. So since I added Bootstrap, I can add in this new class and I can do btn and btn-primary. That of course is gonna change the color of the button it itself and just the format altogether. And so I could leave it like this, or I could use the condition of if it is pending, then we do that. Otherwise we do something else. And so I actually want the primary button to be the action if it's not pending, if it's not already in the item itself, if it's not already in the meal list or the meal queue. And so I'll just do button outline and secondary. These are really easy to look up in the bootstrap documentation. But we refresh now, this gives me a little bit better sense of what it is that I'm trying to do with my recipes, okay? But the thing that this actual template itself is not doing is actually letting this be a form itself. So we're gonna go ahead and do type of submit. Now, if you remember back, we already did these forms in terms of the other partials, like the image upload form, for example. We can actually just copy the top portion of this, paste in here. I do not need this trigger. I do not need this post data. That will be something different and we'll do that in a moment, um, as well as the action itself. Okay, so the idea here, let's get rid of that. So we got our method, our ink type, which we actually don't need that ink type anymore. Uh, but this form itself does have the ability to have a backup if it's not HTMX, right? So I'm actually not gonna implement that version, but in here, as it stands right now, it can be either HTMX or a standard request. We actually don't want that, okay? But we'll, we'll deal with that in a moment. Okay, so what's the actual post path itself? Well, we just did it. It's this right here, right? And so I can actually bring this in, which is why I actually added in the recipe ID. We'll use single quotes just for code completion. Um, I'm, I added the recipe ID as an argument in here, right? So the recipe ID, of course, was added right here. Simple enough. Okay, so now we've got a form ready and I should be able to call post methods now. So I'm clicking on all these. And if I go back into my URL requests, I see that post methods are coming through, right? I can do it several more times. Great, so naturally our view has to handle those post methods. And so um, what I'm gonna do now is say, if the request.method equals to post, now what I wanna do is run that toggle in queue. So I can run you know, meal.objects.toggle in queue, and that's gonna be our user ID and then the recipe ID, okay? So if we go back into that model itself, something that is just simply not happening in here is whether or not this recipe ID uh, is a valid item, right? So we're not actually checking that recipe ID here, which is probably something we might wanna add to this method itself but I'm gonna actually add it into the view here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do from recipe or recipes.models. We're gonna go ahead and import our recipe. And all I wanna do is say that it's valid. So is valid recipe being false? And then we'll go ahead and do try is valid recipe being true if I can actually get the recipe object itself. So recipe object is equal to recipe.objects.get. .object 
and that's gonna be our user ID. So, or the, the user itself, we can use that. Request that user, or simply just user, and the ID being the recipe ID. And then we'll just go ahead and run, you know, accept the pass. And then if it is a valid recipe, then we'll do this toggle. The nice thing is this request method will do all of the work for us as far as toggling it. And then the next portion, either get or post, will actually look up to see if it is pending, which is also pretty cool. So the final thing that I wanna do in here is really just check if not request.htmx, then return a different response of some kind. So if it's not an HTMX request, we don't wanna actually handle it um, like you would normally. But it, you should have the skills to be able to implement this at this point, but I'm just not gonna do that. So we're gonna add in the import of HTTP response bad request and just return that back. Okay, and so the other one is if it's not a authenticated user, then I'm gonna go ahead and return that bad request as well, right? And this one is actually gonna be slightly different because it already assumes that it's a HTMX request. So now I'll just do HTTP response and now return the response of invalid or you must be logged in with the status of 400 as well. So it's still a bad request, same kind of response uh, code, uh, but it's you know handling it for HTMX, which the user probably won't see this anywhere. You probably won't be using this anywhere other than on uh, the user's recipes themselves, right? So now we should be able to toggle this and it should work just fine, right? So we look at our meals here. I've got a bunch of them. Of course, I could delete all these, the historical meals that I put in there. And of course, now when I run this, it's giving me that, which is pretty cool. So in each one of these should be pending. And then if I remove one of them, you know, that, that should actually show me, well, I'm not sure which one it is. There it is, aborted. Cool. Um, so a quick and easy way to just get this going, of course. Now, the other thing is here, I'm gonna go ahead and just change my classes a little bit to having a little bit more of a margin in here and something like that. So if these are from Bootstrap itself, of course, um, let's do margin bottom of three and that separates things a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and just give an HR line here. And there we go. So we've got our recipes, we can add one, we can remove them, we can do all sorts of fun, cool things here. Now, naturally we could actually have the toggle element itself, this, all of this imported in to wherever we're rendering this data out, right? So we don't need to do the actual HX get here. That's not completely necessary, uh, unless of course you absolutely want this validation check, right? So this even should be able to have a reverse relationship to figure out whether or not it is in the queue or there is one that's valid. Um, I'm not gonna do that at this point, but the idea here is I can get a meal query set based off of the recipe itself, right? It has that reverse relationship. So everything that's in this template here can be done from the element itself, the actual recipe object itself, which may or may not be something you will want to implement. Now, that's the challenge. That's kind of what I'm getting at here is if you wanna take under the challenge of having the reverse relationship from the recipe model itself, creating a instance method in here for the recipe object to actually see whether or not it is in the pending meals or the meal queue uh, at this point. I think that would be a good challenge for you to try out. But the cool thing about this is now that we have a queue, of course I probably should have a display of what that queue is, uh, before I even get there, I actually want to prepare a lot of my inventory items, things that I'm gonna be buying from the grocery store to make these recipes happen.